Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode on the channel of Star Wars Kura. Last time, I'm still trying to figure out why Juhani's dialogue isn't advancing. I have a theory, I'm hoping I'm wrong, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but if I'm not, we're screwed. We're going to go to Manan. Now we move on. Kalo Nord is dead, Lord Malak. He has failed in his mission. Forgive me. The penalty for failure is death, Admiral Karath. But the failure was Kalo's, not yours. You may rise. Shall I hire another bounty hunter, Lord Malak? No mere bounty hunter can stand against a Jedi. I shall not make the same mistake again. My apprentice, Darth Bandon, shall take care of our young Jedi friend. <laughs> Find Bastila and bring her to me, alive if possible. As you command, Master. Really? We're getting attacked again? Oh no, we're not. Thought we were. Star Wars esque hangar. These games really hate these types of hangers for some reason. <laughs> uh. You felt it, yes? Another vision? The Force continues to work through us, showing us the star maps unearthed by Revan and Malak. It is strange that anyone would have built a star map here. The entire surface of Manan is covered by nothing but vast oceans. It looked like the star map was underwater. The ocean floor is vast, and much of it is uncharted, even by the native Selkarth. But how could Revan and Malak have found their way down? No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. It's underwater. I think we found the location. Yes, what's on your mind? Oh, you want to argue some more, is that it? What does it matter that much? Why can't you just leave it be? I just don't trust easily. And for good reasons, which are my own. Both work together, Carf. So there's plenty of reasons to choose oh, me. Damn it. I suppose I won't get any rest until I talk, will I? You want to know why I don't trust anyone? Fine. Here goes. Five years ago, the Jedi had just finished the war with the Mandalorians. Revan and Malak were heroes. I was damn proud to have served in their fleet. It was completely unexpected when they turned on us, invading the Republic while we were still weak. Nobody knew what to think, least of all me. Our heroes had become brutal, conquering Sith. And we were all but helpless before them. I mean, think about it. If you can't even trust the best of the Jedi, who can you trust? They're into the dark side, obviously. Why is it so personal? Uh, 
Of course the Jedi turned to the dark side. There were others, however, who weren't Jedi. Good men, trusted men, who joined them. Malak and Revan and the Sith deserve to die for what they've done, but the ones who fled the Republic and joined them are even worse. The dark side has nothing to do with why they joined with the Sith. They deserve no mercy. I haven't joined the Sith car. I know. I'm... And I should apologize to you. I've, I've become so accustomed to expecting the worst in others, and you've done nothing to deserve that. It's just... No, never mind. Let's just continue with what we were doing. I'd rather not talk about it. Yes, what's on your mind? You got... We'll have to leave and come back. Let's talk to Jolie a bit. Because I'm quite sure we can talk. Got something on your mind? What did you say to come with me? You got yourself a fast little ship? <laughs> I forgot what engine sounded like. The closest thing to that on Kashik is an uller in mating season. Ugh, frightful. <laughs> I forgot the line. That's actually pretty good. Or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of a synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? No, seriously, tell me. I'm old, damn it. I'm allowed to be enigmatic when I want to be. And don't you go telling me otherwise. You know, you remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny, all of that. Breath like a bantha. Did you annoy this person endlessly too? Oh, <laughs> very funny. Is it my fault that some people are so easily annoyed? They're like impatient little children with blasters. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yes, Andor Vex was his name. The force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. I never heard of him. No, you wouldn't have. Sometimes swirling force is just swirling force. It gets us old Jedi's excited at our age, so we go, ooh, destiny. Well, it turned out that poor Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. Is there supposed to be some hidden meaning to all this? I don't know. Are you overconfident? I hadn't noticed. Even if I had, I would never comment on it. We're talking about Andor, remember? Let's see. Oh yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. As boring as the story. Well, let's just say that I was a strapping young lad with a full head of hair, and Coruscant was a small town with a well. <laughs> I was just about to abandon Andor to whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dimians, but at the time, they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, big teeth. Krat has us hauled onto the bridge of his ship for questioning, and that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. Uh, how did you know? Swirling force, remember? Jedi here. Granted, I was just interpreting the signs, but we get trained in that sort of thing, more or less. Well, Andor decides that his destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands. Free me now. I'm not answering questions. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know who I am? Yeah. Krat decides he's had enough and begins crushing Andor's neck. I told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut. I think he agreed, too, or those could have just been gurgling noises. No, well, well, anyway. Finally, Grant has enough of Andor and tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft. Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something sensitive on the way down or just didn't agree with the reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. You're kidding. Everyone panics, and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly, and the Dimians never quite recovered. Changed the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? I hate you, man. Well, now that's the ingratitude of youth for you. I relate an exciting tale, and do I get thanked for it? No. 
No, it's all me, me, me. Anyway, go on. My throat is dry and you're making me cranky. Shoo! Got something on you. And you got nothing. Oh, I get it. Ganderous. Any yeah, stories? what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. What was your story? I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. What happened next? The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop base, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. You drop from orbit, orbit, riding a draw. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons was unmatched. An 80 kilometer plunge through the atmosphere Dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I want basilisk. I want basilisk war Roger. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. No. Is there something else you want to know? Uh, nothing You're... for now. Yeah, what do you want? I was wondering if any more you war stories. another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. Why? What happened? The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it something inactive in the cold the heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up after i'd hit it spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell still covering it evaporating the gases what lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth a deformed rock pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars i think something even older might have been inside that an asteroid Maybe, but maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. A ship! We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. 
Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? That ship, Kendra's talk about? That ship is a Yuzong Vong ship. If you guys know the comics, you know how bad hearing about the Yuzong Vong is. They are probably equals, if not better, at combat than the Mandalorians and more scary. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Sorry, we won't be going out, Kendris. Yeah, what do you want? So when do you find any more war stories? I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you. But I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. In one battle above the world of Althea, my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan. Tell the story. For five days, they had managed to hold off our forces, keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Althiri would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. These Althiri don't seem too bright. They weren't stupid. Stupid races don't make starships and weapons of mass destruction. But they weren't masters of the arts of war as the Mandalorians are. Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening, a mistake they had made of their forces, and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating them. You disobeyed your orders. This is a chance given to a warrior in a lifetime. The chance to change the course of history in a single act. Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. Their command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plain of Apus. They were shredded by the rings or crashed into rocks or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end, as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time, maybe, I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with this. Something else you want to know? Nothing more for now. Yeah, what? Believe... Nope, we can't. You're... Uh, I believe we can't do cars, but we might be able to do Candorises. Depends. We'll switch Candorise with T3 soon. Because Jolie is the more important one. At feet. Powers, destroy droid, alright he's got that, like Valor, you Republic people are so pathetic sitting around groveling at the table scraps the Galactic Senators deign to give you, it makes me sick. The Senators work for the good of the whole galaxy, not for individual gain. Ha! Don't make me laugh, you gutless simp. It's the destiny of weak-minded fools like you to be ruled over by the strong, like we Sith. I'm warning you. Don't push me or you'll get just what you're asking for. Try it. Just try it. I'd love to see you throw the first punch. And with all the cameras around, the Selkath would be all over you inside of 30 seconds. You break their laws. You pay the price, Republic scum. But I can see that you're not man enough to back up your words anyway. If you ever feel like relieving yourself of your worthless existence, feel free to come by our enclave here. We have many, many ways to fulfill your wish. 
<sighs> yeah, what are you... Oh, I apologize, Master Jedi. I should not have been rude. No, really, I should apologize. I, I should try to control myself, as you Jedi do. Is there anything I can help you with? Never mind, I must of go. Of course. If you have any other questions, you should probably see Roland Wan. He's the Republic diplomat here. He's by the Republic Enclave, near the visitor residences. Oh, if you don't know where that is, go north from here, then south past the port official in the first courtyard, east into the second courtyard, then north, then east again. You got that? Have a pleasant stay, Master Jedi. Yeah, that's one hell of directions. Okay, so... Candrus is not ready yet. So we'll just bring T3. I have some Gazek. Take this kiss car off my hands. Deal. Because 100 credits is nothing compared to being able to use the ship for quests because the kiss car. Block anything else coming in. <sighs> but we're going to get into Manon. Skills. What are the rules exactly? That's it? Only two laws? I understand. And once again, force persuade because... My council wouldn't approve, but they always were a little stodgy about using the force on people. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And we went the wrong way. God damn it. Obey the laws here on Manan, human. Let's go. And we'll get our first taste. Of Manon. It's 
so let's look around I didn't. Nobody knew where you were, not even Sunry. But I heard the Selkath mention you and your friends. The Force has brought you to help us. Why? Whatever could be the matter, my dear? Oh, it's horrible, Jolie. Sunry has been arrested. The Sith have accused him of murder. Murder? But how? It's all a mistake, Jolie. Sunry isn't a murderer. Someone is trying to frame him. Calm down, Elora. Where's Sunry now? Sunry's being held at the Selkath courts. They won't let anyone in to see him. Please, go to the courts. Talk to the judges. Maybe the Selkath will listen to you. Don't worry, Alora. We'll get to the bottom of this and help Sunry. Somehow. And we meet Julie's quest. Yeah. We're going to have to stop. Get someone acquitted. The Republic respects the peace of Otto City, Your Honor. But the Sith are a violent people who leave violence in their wake. I have three soldiers in the infirmary. If the Republic's soldiers were more capable, they would not have suffered such serious injuries. Are my soldiers to be punished simply because they won a fair fight? I hardly call six against three a fair fight. The Sith are cowards who attack only when they have the advantage of numbers. They were provoked, Your Honor. The Sith goaded them into this fight. I would like to investigate the murder case and follow the sunray. I suppose your sunray's only hope. We have to at least try to help him. Remember these facts, because these are important. Yes, but it almost seems too heavily stacked, doesn't it? Very suspicious. We'll talk to the judges later. Now, if we go this way instead. Truly, I wonder to behold. What are you talking about? What do you want me to do?
Ah, so this is the higher mercenary one. Would you need me to just... Careful here, kid. Start poking your nose in a place it doesn't belong, and you might not like what you find. I'll look into you, into it for you. No, go. Okay. However, it's this guy. You want me to investigate these experiences? I shall look to these disappointments for you, Shayless. We can't do much about that. However, that is a good start to a quest. However, start looking into the murder. Such a nice place, honestly. If this were a real city, I wouldn't mind going. The only play the only thing I think would sour is the Seth. Your precious Republic's days are numbered. It won't be long until Malak turns his armada loose on Coruscant itself. You're a fool. When the Sith descend on Coruscant, our numbers will block out the sun itself. The galactic senators will collapse trembling in fear and beg for mercy at Malak's feet. You underestimate the Republic's resolve. We'll die before we surrender Coruscant. That can be arranged. Remember what happened to Taris. Malak could do the same to the core worlds. He wouldn't dare. Now it is you who underestimate our resolve. Open the door. Open the door. Let's talk to Ignis. You're the one defending Sunry now, huh? Well, the hotel's open for you. And I guess I gotta answer any questions you want, too. The Sith woman, Alasa, rented a room in the hotel. An hour or two later, Sunri comes in and goes to her room. A couple hours later, I hear a blaster shot and see Sunri running. He can't run good because he's a cripple, but he still was going pretty fast. I would swear he started after the shot, though. Could have gone off after he left? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's possible, just barely. But I wouldn't say that to the court. No. No. No way I'm lying. <sighs> Hate doing this. But this will help us. Yeah. I'll tell the court Sunry left before the shot went off. Hmm. I guess this is what they call working the system. 
Not that I'm objecting. Now, was... Elasa used to rent rooms here every week or so. Then Sunri would come by a couple hours later and stay all night. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what was going on. There were only two other people in the hotel when it happened. One was a Rodian named Glupor. Seems like a really dirty, shifty type. Normally, I don't let his kind in here. I'm a reputable businessman, you know. But there weren't many people here, so I decided to take a chance. The other is a regular named Feareth Me. He's a Pazak player. Probably an addict, but he claims he's big in some circles. Don't know anything about him other than that. Anything else you... Well, okay. We're doing this to try and get Sunry off. Let's first... Let's first steal stuff. You with the cell cat? You here to see me about the murder too? I told the damn fish everything I knew. What more do you all want from me? What do you know about Sunri and Alasa? Well, Sunri, I only heard of once or twice in passing. Some sort of old-time war hero against the Sith. Seen him around in the hotel, too. Going to Alasa's room always, of course. Kept the rest of the building up half the night with their damn antics, usually. You mean Sunri was having a relationship with I'm not Alasa. anything like that. What they did in that room, in private, is their business. And there isn't any rule against Sith and Republic seeing each other for personal reasons. Although, if you think her Sith Master didn't know, you must be fooling yourself. Sith Master? Oh, uh, well, Elasa was a Sith, so of course she'd have to have someone above her. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything. Maybe if I toss in 100 credits? 100 credits isn't enough for the kind of trouble I'd be having if I told you. Sorry, you're going to... You know you want to tell me. You know, I think I could trust you. Heck, I don't even know why I shouldn't tell you. Well, one time, I saw Alasa coming in wearing this big cloak. I was on my way to my room, and she normally wears stuff like that, so I didn't pay her too much attention. But this time, I accidentally brushed up against her. Accidentally, of course. And her cloak fell open. Now, I don't have any qualms about the Sith. I leave them alone, and they leave me alone. And seeing as how Alasa had a Sith lightsaber under her cloak, I'm not going to poke that hornet's nest. She was a dark Jedi. Seems so. But I'm not getting myself in any further with the Sith. I know how ruthless they are. Smart. Now that's all I'm going to tell you. I'll testify it to the court, but you aren't going to get anything else out of me. Dark trade points gain, sadly, but being real, it is useful. But let's talk to Glupor. <laughs> I have questions about the murder of Alessa. Why were you at the hotel? What did you see? What about Alasa's room? Did someone pay you to do something in that room, Glupor? T3, let's bust open this door. <laughs> Is there anything here? No, of course. <clears throat> I'm here. Of course there ain't. Of course. The mysterious man. You, Jedi. I hear you are investigating the Sunri murder trial, are you not? 
This case is not at all what it appears to be. Many currents, might I say, flow beneath the surface. What do you mean? This murder is much more complicated than it may first appear. The Sunri and Elasa are proxies for their governments, and both sides want the other to fail. You can see the journey uh, by the footprints. You understand, yes? Um, I think so. Kinda. I'm saying they both had something to do with it. They've both kept their hands in this from the start. If you want to get to the bottom of this murder, you might seek information from both the Sith and the Republic, likely in their embassies. Did you just give it to me? No, of course not. You think state secrets are for sale on the common market? You would have to be <laughs> devious to get what you want. Heed my advice, Jedi. And you may yet find the truths in this murder. That's a hint to continue the quest. However, we've aligned everything, but we should be able to get Sunray off. Welcome to Manan. I'm Roland Wan. As the official representative of the Republic Embassy on this planet, I'm here to help all. I don't know much about the facts of the case, but I find it hard to believe. I never met Sunri, but he's a hero of the Republic, not a murderer. The so-called evidence against him is an obvious frame-up. It has to be. The Sith must have plotted Sunri's downfall to embarrass and discredit the Republic. Any chance the Republic is involved? The Republic? Well, that makes no sense. Sunri has no enemies in the Republic, and his conviction will make all of our jobs more difficult. If you want to solve this mess, I would focus on the Sith. That or check out the murder scene at the hotel. Talk to the other guests. Maybe they know something. I regret I could not be of more assistance in your... Oh, of course. Of course I'll do whatever I can. But I'm only a simple diplomatic representative of the Republic. I doubt I can be of any use to the Jedi Council. An ancient and forgotten race. And you think it may be here on Manan? Hmm. Well, perhaps. But if you want to get information about that, you'll have to do something for me first. We were using a submersible reconnaissance droid in the ocean surrounding Otto City, and it was damaged. It took a data recording of the outside of the city before being driven off by the Faraxan sharks. But while it was returning to the surface, it encountered difficulties and was disabled. Its automatic systems floated it to the surface, but we could not retrieve it in time. The Sith were applying subtle pressure to the Selkath authorities for some reason we've not determined, and were able to delay us long enough that they could retrieve the droid before we did. The droid's data centers are heavily encrypted, so it will take the Sith several days, we believe, to get to its data. It was captured 12 hours ago. It is imperative that we get it back. It's heavily guarded, we're sure, in the Sith Embassy here on Manan. Since we have no remaining soldiers to spare, and certainly not our elite ones, we have no one capable of entering the Sith base and retrieving it. That is what we would ask you to do. How do we get into the Sith base? There are several leads we've been working on to get into the Sith base. Any of them should work for you, although it might be wise to concentrate your efforts on just one. The first method that's possible is to help us interrogate a Sith prisoner we managed to catch after he tried to infiltrate our base. He's being held just inside our enclave. We think he may be able to give us the passcode that the Sith give their informers to enter the base. He has proved most resilient so far. Is there enough way? We managed to pick up a crate of blank Sith data cards, the type they use for pass cards. The encryption system to unlock them is very difficult, however. But if you are more skilled than our technicians, you may be able to gain access that way. Is there another way? The Sith have got the Seltcalf to give them exclusive use of one of the main hangar bays. Visiting Sith Masters use this bay to land, then take a speeder over the water to an external entrance to the Sith Enclave. The luckless spy we mentioned earlier had a pass card to that hangar on him. While it is surely well guarded, it may prove to be the most direct route. Here's the card. The Sith base itself is very heavily guarded. If they became aware of your presence, I fear you would be quickly outnumbered and killed. Here is a pass card to get you inside our facility. You should find all you need to get started in there. You can choose whichever of the methods you want, as long as you get in the base and get the data recording back. Which method do you think you would like to try first? I'll raid the landing bay. You'll need luck for that one. Odds are they have some pretty strong guards in there. 
but it's also the way most likely to succeed. I wish you luck in your task. Should you retrieve the data recording from the droid, return it here to me, and we can see about getting you that information. Okay. Now, now, technically, we can go in there, and there is a recording. However, if we get the recording, if we get Sunri innocent, we get Dark Side points. Because Sunri, yes, did kill Lhasa. I'm not doing that. Not doing that. We're being blissfully unaware of what happened. Over. So the last thing we're doing in this episode, we're going to do everything we can to get Sunri off. I hear you've been appointed as arbiter in Sunri's trial. My husband is innocent. Please. What? Don't insult us both. Sunri's... Sunri is a just and honorable man. How dare you accuse him? Us. Now, now, Elora. We're not here to pass judgment, my dear. We do need to know everything if we're here to help, yes? Yes. Yes, he was having an affair. He was seeing that... that Sith woman. After all these years we've been together, he just... just dropped me like that. Not publicly, oh no. But inside, that's what it feels. He started seeing Alasa last year. I... I had my suspicions for a while, but he was careless. Pretty soon everyone knew. But even though I'm sure that Harlot was only using him, I know he couldn't have killed her. He came and confessed to the affair to me. He said he was going to there to break it off, to end it. Maybe the Sith woman attacked him, and, and he had to defend himself. But even though he cheated on me, inside he's still the man I loved. Yeah. He's too kind and gentle to have killed her in cold blood. That was a long time ago. In a war far, far away. He's changed now. Settled down. Oh, just please. Prove his innocence. Find the real evidence. That's all I ask. The real... Yeah. I hear you've... Sunrise, he's a cripple. That's true. I'd forgotten about that. Let's not forget that he would have to have been considerably older than the Sith woman. Hmm. I'm a Jedi, and one who is living alone in the Shadowlands until recently. That keeps you in shape, damn it. We're talking about Sunri here. And there's no way he would do something so dishonorable as hit her from behind. Sunri's a decorated war hero. He's a hero of the Republic. Find the Okay, let's go talk to Sunray. First gotta to talk to this guy before we can go in. Jolie, what are you doing here? Alora sent me, Sunray. I'm here to get you out of this mess. The courts went and made us arbiters for your case. Just like old times, eh, Jolie? You come swooping in out of nowhere to save my tail from the fire! You saved my wrinkle butt more than a few times as well, friend, if I recall. But there'll be time for catching up later. Right now, we need to focus on the case. The case is a complete frame-up. Anyone looking at the evidence could see that. Or so I thought. But the cell cast seem to think that there's... Well, that there's enough to go to trial. There aren't any witnesses. All that evidence against me is circumstantial and completely flawed. There are a few things I have to Go do. Go ahead, ask. We, uh, I don't know what this must look like. Yes. Yes, we were having an affair. 
I know it was wrong, but I'm a weak man. Alasa was beautiful and young. How was I to resist her charms? But I didn't kill her. I loved her. Please. I know I made a terrible mistake getting involved with Alasa, but I was going there to break it off with her. I did it, but found out later that she was dead. I don't deserve to go to jail just for having an affair, do I? You have to help me. Go ahead. A Rodian? I didn't know there were any Rodians on Manan. Oh, except for Tybark and this one named Glupar who's hanging around the hotel all the time. Okay, so maybe there are a whole bunch of Rodians on Manan. But what does that matter? If he planted evidence at the scene, it's a clear sign of a frame-up. He probably took all the evidence of the real killer at the same time. The evidence of a Sith conspiracy keeps getting stronger, doesn't it? I suspect there's still stuff you want to clear up. Go ahead, ask. Ask what you need to. I've got nothing to hide. How would they know? They weren't there. I heard some of the witnesses said that too, but I swear she was alive when I left. I wonder if the Sith had been putting pressure on people to get them to convict me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. They've had it in for me since the war. You should ask everyone about that. They might admit to helping the Sith under pressure. That's a good evidence. Well, uh, you know I was having an affair with a lot. But I can tell you it wasn't easy. She is... was young. I found out later she'd been murdered. But let's look at the fact... Alasa was brutally killed. Think about that. She was a Sith. Tra my war injuries make it difficult for me to walk, even to hold things. See how my hands are shaking? How could I kill a Sith warrior at close quarters? I ask you! Further, they say they found my heroes crosser to crime scene. Could I leave my war medal behind if I... Obviously, the Sith planted the cross. And what about the lack of forensic evidence? Skin and hair samples, clothing fibers. Why isn't there anything like that at the crime scene? Sounds like... I hope you can see how the Sith are. Anything else I can... Okay, so... Guess you could interview witnesses at the hotel where the murder happened. The Selkath already did that, but the... Fish folk don't have much rapport with off, but I think you'd be better off investigating the Sith themselves. Anything else? We can go in there. But Mary, once you've gotten enough, ev we've got enough evidence for trial, in my opinion. I want to begin. Summary's trial now. Yes, I know. Let's begin tri trial. Also, don't insult them. You'll be put to jail. It is an honor to see justice served, and I will see Sunri is executed for the crime he has committed. The man I saw leaving, Sunri, probably left after I heard the blaster shot. The guilt of the accused is apparent even this early in the trial. What the cross is on You are feareth me, the well-known Pazak player. I wonder if we can trust the of course, Your Honor. Feareth me. What did you see the night of the murder? Well, I came out into the hallway after hearing the blaster shot and saw Sunri over there limping down the hall out of the building. <laughs> A very obvious point, Your Honors. I think it may have been. I mean, 
You'd have to be pretty stupid to leave something that important lying around, wouldn't you? Yes, from what I could tell, she carried a lightsaber under that cloak of hers. Objection! That doesn't prove she was a Jedi. You mean, actually see him kill her with my own eyes? Well, no. No. Glupor the Rodian, you were staying in the hotel the night of the murder and saw Sonri leaving Alasa's room, didn't you? This is clear then. Don't do it, Glupor. Lies! Slander! I object! I have no additional questions. Might as well check. You, Elora, are Sunri's lawful wife. He was crippled in that war. Do you not believe he... Yes. I guess he would. And there you have motive. Sunri seeks revenge... <laughs> Yes. He fought against the Sith in the last war. I don't know how much that means to the Sith or to your Selkath, your honor. The kind of man who earns that medal. Yes. Yes, it was true. It seems painfully obvious that he killed her. He'd been seeing her for some time, I think. He'd gone there that night to end it. But now things have become so... I wish to call forth Sunri himself, Your Honours. Are you a war hero, Mr. Sunri? You fought in wars against the Sith Empire, correct? Yes, that's right. And I don't regret it either. The Republic needs its heroes. Indeed. Would you say that you dislike the Sith? Even hate them? Of course I hate them! Trying to take over the galaxy every chance they get, killing millions of innocents? Pure politics. Were you in Alasa's room on the night of the murder? Well, yes, I, I was. I had been having an affair with Alasa and my wife, yes. But I realized how wrong I'd been, and I was going there to end it. You were having an affair with a Sith. You wanted to end it quickly and quietly, so you killed her from behind and tried to flee. No, I... I think we can see the answer clear enough, Mr. Sunry. Oh, also, was a Sith spy, was she? Of course she was. Why would a young, beautiful Sith woman get with an old cripple like me? Yes, I think they would. They wouldn't want to lose one of their sources, even though I didn't give them anything. They... they might have killed her for her failure. Or they might have thought she'd turn against them or something like that. The Sith Empire is not the barbaric institution you portray it to be. I don't know. The medal had gone missing some time ago. I never found out what happened to it. 
It's possible the Sith had stolen it and had it planted on the body. Supposition, Your Honors? I have no additional questions. Yes. How? <laughs> I think the facts in this case are very straightforward. Sunri was having an affair with Elasa. He sought to end it, and the simplest, quickest method, giving his hatred of the Sith, was to simply kill her. Witnesses saw Sunri fleeing the scene, and material evidence places him there at the time of the murder as well. I am confident that any informed observation of the facts will lead the judges, your honors, to this very conclusion. No one actually made a murder? Oh, that doesn't mean a thing. Sif are obviously sealed and set this up. Objection! Sunray was in an affair, so the Sif killed her. No, it's also a spy. Sunray was ending the affair. The Sith her. would not leave the medal of her killer clutched in her hand. My arguments are complete. Your honors, no! Oh, Sunrin. I'm so glad. Elora, thank you for saving me. I don't know how I can repay you. Elora and I are going to leave here and get as far away from all this as soon as we can. I and the Republic will not forget what you've done for us. Thank you. that this will end this episode of Star Wars Quarter next time we will infiltrate the Sith Embassy and well find ourselves in a very heated battle both mental social and physical this is Ina Zuma, signing out.